Chairman Stark and Ranking Member Herger, thank you for having me here today. My name is Eugene Heslin, and I'm the head physician of Bridge Street Medical Group, a family practice of six physicians in Saugerties, New York. Bridge Street is a typical primary care practice. We serve a community of about 18,000 people. My panel, I take care of four or five generations from the same family. I can probably walk out the front door of my office about a half mile, throw a rock, and hit a cow. It's pretty small. I also serve as the chairman of the board of Health Alliance of the Hudson Valley, a hospital system that integrates two fee-for-service hospitals and one critical access hospital. I serve on the board of the New York eHealth Collaborative, the public-private partnership to collaborate on state and regional health IT. What am I here to do today? I'm here to testify for meaningful use of electronic medical records for small medical practices. I'm here to speak on behalf of my patients representing their stake in health IT. Let me give you an example. About six months ago, about 3 a.m., I was called by the emergency room because an 89-year-old patient of the practice was short of breath. He was disoriented. He had given the paramedics a list of medications. I was able to securely access his electronic health record from my home and saw right away that the medications that they were reading to me over the phone didn't match his medical record. I did look up his wife's medical record, however, and discovered that he had given them the wrong paper medication list. If I didn't have the HR available, I would not have his current medication list at my hands, and I might have prescribed the wrong medications for him. HIT tools help my patients get safer, effective care 24 hours a day. There are significant challenges in EHR adoption well beyond the financial resources. Disruption by implementation and human reengineering cannot be understated. With financial support from the HEAL-1 grant from New York State, our office went live on electronic medical records in 2006. We installed our second system in 2008. With some use of electronic registries, and we use electronic prescribing about 90% of our time now. The hardest part of the transition from paper to electronic records was redesigning the workflow. It's an ongoing process. After my initial review of the final rule for meaningful use, I can say that we are well on our way to meeting the criteria. It's definitely achievable for a practice like mine. I'm not sure it's going to be easy, though. Nationally, over 50 percent of family practitioners currently have EHRs, and the AFP is very, very supportive of us. That being said, we have remarkable support for adoption of health IT to improve health care in our community through three local organizations that work collaboratively with the Hudson Valley Initiative. The first is THINK. I'm a founding board member of that. The Taconic Health Information Network and Community is a not-for-profit local convener of health care organizations and one of the local extension agents for the federal regional extension direct grant that Dr. Blumenthal spoke to earlier. The second is the Taconic IPA, a 4,000-member physician group that is focused on quality improvement. The third is MedAllies, a local resource and health information service provider that helped my practice to adopt and effectively use EHR. Forty-six percent of primary care physicians in our community now use EHRs. In 2009, we decided to adopt a patient-centered medical home model. We set out to tr transform our practice using health IT as a foundation. Along with 10 other practices and 230 other physicians, we worked with the Taconic IPA to achieve NCQA patient-centered medical home recognition. The incentive was attached to the medical home project speaks directly to the value of meaningful use incentive payments. I can tell you that incentives are useful in engaging physician interest, offsetting some, although certainly not all, the costs of IT adoption and meaningful use. Incentives that soon will be awarded by the federal government for meeting meaningful use criteria help map a path that we can take to reach the goals for more efficient and effective health care delivery. The criteria are achievable for those with the resources and the intestinal fortitude to make positive changes happen. In meeting the criteria, going is is it going to be easy to meet these criteria? Absolutely not. There are significant challenges. Financing, hardware, software, process re workflow redesign. But the incentives can help me to persuade my colleagues that there is critical mass, that it is doable at the community level, and they need to move along the same pathway to benefit their patients and community. In conclusion, why is it so important that the federal government support meaningful use? Medicare patients access health care two to three times more than younger patients. The number of those complex patients is going to double in the next decade or two. Evidence-based criteria doctors use to practice will evolve too quickly for doctors to keep up on a paper-based system. In the face of increased need for primary care, we have to develop efficiencies and logic systems that will allow us to care for our patients to use more intelligent tools more effectively. Meaningful use moves us in that direction. 
We need to be able to continue to evolve the rule to make sure the goal of appropriate adoption in a timely fashion meets the needs of the public good and the demand for services. Early adopters' experiences can be used to help make newer EHR installs less difficult. I encourage the panel to study markets like the Hudson Valley. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.